What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. Today I've got kind of the first home renovation project on this channel. I'm replacing all of the carpet in this room with this really nice laminate flooring. And this is basically gonna become my final photo wall where I get all those thumbnails for my projects, all those final shots. And I am super excited to have a room dedicated to this. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. Let's go ahead and get started with the build. The first step with any flooring insulation project is going to be cleaning out the room. And this particular room had accumulated a good bit of stuff over the last couple years we've lived in this house. Luckily, my buddy Alex came over to help out with this step and it went pretty quickly. Once the room was empty, we could get to ripping up the carpet and there were two different types of carpet going from the main room to this bedroom. So I first needed to cut the seam between those two pieces so I didn't tear up the carpet that we were keeping in the main room. After cutting the seam, I could just pull back on the carpet and start ripping it up. This carpet was attached with tack strips around the perimeter of the room, so it required some force to pull up, but eventually it started coming up. Once I got a section going, I cut it into a strip to make it more manageable, and carpet is extremely heavier, really a lot heavier than you expect, so it makes it a lot easier to move out of the room if it's in smaller chunks like this. I rolled up each strip as I cut them and took it outside as we went. And we just kept repeating this process with the carpet and the pad underneath until the room was completely empty. And then I could move on to removing the tack strips. And these things are kind of a pain in the butt, but there's a method to removing them that makes things a lot easier. I actually picked up this method from my buddy Bob over at I Like To Make Stuff. He has some really great flooring installation videos on other types of flooring. You should definitely go check those out. But anyway, the trick with removing tack strips efficiently is to hit your pry bar underneath each of the nails that's holding down the tack strip, but only just enough to loosen it. If you actually pry up on the strip, it has a tendency to splinter into a bunch of pieces, which makes cleanup a lot more challenging. And it's not always gonna come off perfectly depending on how the nails respond, but you can definitely move a lot faster if you avoid prying and focus on just popping the nails out. And you can see here how quickly it goes and how easy it is to clean up when the strip comes off in one piece. Once all the tack strips were up, I could then vacuum the entire room, making sure all of the little nails that held down the tack strips were gone. If any of these little things end up underneath the flooring, it will be really obvious after installation, so be really careful and thorough here. Next, I could start adding the underlayment, and since I'm using Pergo flooring, I went with Pergo underlayment as well, and it was really easy to work with. When installing laminate on top of a concrete slab, your underlayment needs to have some kind of vapor barrier, which this one does. To lay the underlayment, I just added a strip, cut it to length, tucked it under the baseboard, and then moved on to the next row. And luckily this stuff was the perfect length to cover two rows per pack of underlayment, so this made things really easy. This stuff also already had an adhesive strip attached, so I could just attach the strips to each other without the need for any underlayment tape. And the main area of the room was really easy, but things got a little bit more tricky when I got to the closet, but I just took my time, did a bunch of test fitting, and eventually got it pretty much perfect. Once all the underlayment was installed, I could move on to actually adding the flooring. All right, so now that the room is all cleaned up and we've got all this underlayment down, we can get to finally actually putting in this flooring. And it should go pretty quickly. Uh, these first couple of rows, I think are gonna be a little bit more tricky just because they're not gonna be weighted down and attached to a lot of other things. So they're gonna have a tendency to slide around and that kind of thing. I bought this kind of kit. It had some spacers, it had some tapping blocks, and it had a pull bar, uh, three things that you're definitely gonna need. So probably good to go ahead and get a kit like that. I'll have a link in the video description below. So what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and cut off this end over at the miter saw and then I'm also going to rip off the tongue on these inside edges here on this first row at the table saw and then the final thing we're gonna want to do before we move over into the shop is measure the length of the last board in this row so that way I can go ahead and cut that to length before ripping the tongue off of it so that I can then use that cut off in my next row to get that nice staggered joint so let's go ahead and lay these out and then we can get that measurement and then we can move into the shop so for the first row, I needed to cut off the tongue on the short edge of the first board, as well as rip off the tongue on all the boards on the first row. Now before doing that, I marked a line on the last board in the first row. I used my miter saw to cut all the boards to length on this project, but a circular saw in speed square would also work just fine. Realistically, these cuts don't need to be perfect since they're gonna be covered up by quarter round trim anyway. After cutting the short tongue off the first board and cutting the last board to length at the miter saw, I ripped the tongue off of all three of the boards from the first row at the bandsaw. And as you might notice, I actually got this backwards, ripping off the groove instead of the tongue, and this caused a ton of frustration when trying to install those first few rows. But once I figured out my error, I started over with fresh boards, and this made my life a whole lot easier. With my corrected boards, I could get to assembling the first few rows, 
And to attach the boards, I first lifted the board with the tongue facing the groove and pushed it in until it was fully seated, and then I could push down on the board to lock the boards in place. Next, I added the next board, again seating that long edge first, and then tapping the board into place to seat the short edge. And with a few boards added, I could add a box of flooring on top to help keep the boards in place while tapping. And I just kept repeating this process for the first two rows. And I found it a lot easier to put these together by staggering the boards rather than trying to do one complete row at a time, at least for this first pair of rows. Once I got to the last board in the first row, I needed to use a pull bar to pull the board into place since a tapping block wouldn't fit. I could then mark the last board on the second row to length. And this is really easy to do if you just flip the board around so that the grooves are facing each other other, and this will ensure you have a board at the perfect length with no measuring and you know forgetting your numbers when you're headed out to the miter saw. After cutting the piece to length of the miter saw, I could install it, again using the pull bar to fully seat it. And with those first two rows done, things got a whole lot easier since the boards had less of a tendency to slide around. I added a third row and then slid all three rows into their final place with the spacer blocks on all three sides of the boards. And from there, it was just more of the same, adding more boards, cutting them to length, and making sure to stagger those joints so that I didn't have any joints that were closer than 12 inches from each other. And I just kept repeating this until I got to my first obstacle, a doorway and I needed to notch out the board to fit underneath the trim, making sure that the edges of the flooring were completely concealed by this trim since I wouldn't be adding cord around to this area. Before notching out the board, I cut it to final length and then made a few marks on the board where I needed to cut it. And to cut out the notch, I used a jigsaw, which made really easy work of this process. Once I cut out the notch, I could test fit the board and realized I had once again mixed things up. Well, that's not gonna work. I recut a new board off camera and then needed to undercut the trim before installing the board. And to do this, I used an off cut of the flooring to hold up my flush trim saw and cut away the trim. And this results in a perfect fit with almost no gap between the flooring and trim. Next, I could tap the board into place and you'll notice I ended up using an off cut of the flooring rather than a tapping block in most of these scenarios. These tongues are pretty fragile and it's really easy to damage them with a regular tapping block. From there, I could just continue installing more flooring, repeating the steps you've already seen. And while I'm installing, let's talk about the sponsor of this week's video, Aero Fastener. Aero makes a wide variety of fastening tools, including staple guns, nailers, glue guns, riveters, and more. And I use the Aero PT18G Brad Nailer and Aero Brad Nails to install all of the quarter round trim on this build, which you'll see later. And I have a ton of projects featuring Aero tools coming up, including some exclusive projects going up on the Aero site, so stay tuned. If you'd like to learn more about Aero and their full line of fastening tools and fasteners, check out the link in the video description below. I just kept installing flooring until I got to my next obstacle, a uh, transition. All right, now I've got the flooring installed up to the first doorway that I'm gonna need to add one of these transition pieces. And I know I've already worked on another doorway, but that one already has a transition that's going from here in an air-conditioned space out into my garage. So it's got more of a kind of weatherproof and insulated strip there. Uh, so we're not gonna use this kind of transition over there. But here we're transitioning from this laminate flooring to carpet. And then here behind me going into the bathroom, I'm gonna be transitioning from the laminate to tile. So uh, I've got these matching transition strips. I've gone ahead and cut it to length. I uh, just did that with the miter saw. And then the other piece that comes with the kit is this metal strip. And this is what actually connects to the subfloor. And then the bottom of the transition has a little piece that fits right into this strip. But once I have that in place, then I can go ahead and install the rest of my flooring and add the transition piece once I'm done with the flooring. So let's go ahead and get to it. I attached the aluminum transition track and then could continue installing the flooring. I needed to install this track so I could know what length the boards needed to be in this area so that I could leave the correct expansion gap. And the last little bit of flooring to install is always the most tricky. You usually have a bunch of stuff to work around. In this case, I needed to rip the boards to width, allowing for the correct gap between the tile and the flooring for the transition, as well as notching the boards to fit around all this trim. Once again, I just took my time, taking a bunch of measurements, and eventually got a really nice fit. And on this very last board, you can see I actually needed to notch out the long edge so that I could fit my pull bar in to seat that board, and this actually ended up working out really well. With that area of the flooring complete, I could go ahead and add the transitions, which just snap into place right into those tracks. Next, I could work on the closet, which I was honestly dreading for some reason, but it ended up going really quickly. It was just more of the same, and I finished by ripping the last boards to width to fit the space. 
And with that, the flooring was done. So all that was left with this install was to add the quarter round trim over that expansion gap around the entire perimeter of the room. And since my quarter round came in eight foot lengths and my room is 12 foot wide, I needed to join the pieces in the middle of the room. To do this, I cut a 45 degree miter on each end of the piece, one to go into the corner of the room and one for where the two pieces of trim will meet in the center of the room. One thing to keep in mind when cutting and installing quarter round is that there's one wider face on the piece and this face needs to be face down on both the miter saw when making the cuts and when being installed in the room. After cutting the piece to length, I installed it with inch and a half long brad nails, making sure to nail into the baseboard and not the flooring. The whole point of this gap is to allow for expansion and contraction and if you nail directly into the flooring, it won't be able to do that. Once all the trim was installed, this install was done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I'm really happy with the way this room came together. I think the flooring looks great. The gray color on this wall, I think is just perfect for what I need it to be. And I am just so happy to finally have a space dedicated to this. So previously you might've noticed, I kind of took all of my final glamor shots and thumbnails outside. And it's really hard to control for light and weather when shooting that outside. Uh, natural light is obviously really nice, but to be able to completely control the lighting in this room is gonna be super, super nice. And I'm just really excited. So I'm definitely gonna have some more home renovation projects coming up later this fall. I'm actually going to be completely finishing my attic space, turning that into a home office for me. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully you guys will enjoy that one. If it's your first time to the channel, go ahead and get subscribed. I put out new project videos like this pretty much every week. Also ring that little notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos or live streams. Also, I'll have a list of all the tools and materials I used in the video description below, including the exact type of flooring I used in case you guys want to kind of replicate this look. And last, I have added that YouTube sponsor feature to the channel. So if you guys want to support me a little bit further, get exclusive live streams and exclusive monthly vlogs you can go ahead and click the sponsor button on this screen or below this video and check out those perks so thanks again for watching everybody and until next time happy building